You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Spiritual Kung Fu with your host, Akalon Hollingsworth. Trained as a Kung Fu priest, Akalon is here to help you win your inner battles and bring light to the darkness in our world. Akalon shares skills, methods, and insights from the self mastery system he developed from his Kung Fu priest training out of nearly 30 years of study and experience. So, welcome the host of Spiritual Kung Fu, Akalon Hollingsworth. Welcome to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thank you for joining me in Solutions to the Conflict of Men and Women. Big topic. For those of you who missed part one last week, I suggest listening to the replay of it after hanging out with us for this tonight, as soon as you get the chance. What you hear in that episode will deepen your understanding of what we are talking about tonight. And I shared a remarkable story of a peacemaking conference for two groups of people who had been killing each other. And this story illustrated that the war going on between men and women is underlying our other conflicts and shaping our collective culture at the root level. So it's important to address, and that's why I picked this topic as my first to focus on for bringing light to the darkness. Now, I will, I'll repeat again for those of you that missed last week, and then also just to have it fresh in our minds now going forward in this episode, I'll repeat the premise from last week in abbreviated fashion. The war between men and women is a war that can only be won by not fighting it. The more we fight each other as women against men and men against women, the more we perpetuate the wounding back and forth, increase our pain and dysfunction, as well as increase toxic culture, which in turn permeate, or perpetuates and intensifies the conflict. I talked last week about how this conflict has many layers, is complicated, and is so pervasive and normalized that we can be fighting this war and not even realize it. We inherit this conflict from those who came before us and pass it on to those following in our footsteps, unless we choose differently. We are in this complex, convoluted, and hurtful conflict together, men and women together, and it affects all of us, regardless of sexual orientation, and it goes far beyond the scope of dating or romantic relationships as a clash of the culture of women and the culture of men, the two primal tribes on our planet. This battle contributes to the inner battles we struggle with. And remember, this show is quite a bit about helping you win your inner battles. Well, the, the battles, the conflict of men and women contributes to our inner battles and in varying ways makes them harder for us to win. It's one reason to address this topic. As I said last week, the war of men and women is a hard fight for us to get clear of. Tonight, we focus on how to get clear of this fight and into something better. I'm calling this the transcendent way, the transcendent alternative. Again, thank you for joining me in this. Our way out of this conflict and into something better is to focus on what's better and live from it in our being, and in our interacting. I'm referring, of course, to better relating with each other as men and women, as women and men. 
I am talking about us embodying this as individuals and as a general culture. I've said before on this show that spiritual kung fu and self-mastery involves embodying the antidotes, being the cure to our suffering. This applies very much to the war of men and women. There is a lot to cover on this episode. I'm going to start by giving you examples of this transcendent way, examples of healthy male and female interactions that are contrary to the sick and dysfunctional examples of male and female interactions that are, cir- that are currently circulating and saturating our collective awareness. It helps to revitalize healthy culture by sharing examples of it. Most of these examples are from my own life of embodying what I am advocating to you all. My Kung Fu teacher taught me to be the example of what I teach. So I offer examples from me doing this stuff. I've included an example from clubbing with a friend that demonstrates responding with the transcendent way to someone being unhealthy towards you. In other words, responding to unhealthy interaction with the healthiness of not allowing, of one, not allowing the unhealthy treatment of you, but also Two, without reacting out of the war of men and women. It's important to note that this transcendent alternative I'm talking about to the war of men and women does not call for allowing people to be unhealthy with us, but makes a distinction in our approach of how we take care of ourselves in not letting them mis- someone mistreat us. I'm not saying don't ever defend yourself. I'll never say that. After all, I am a warrior and a Kung Fu teacher. I teach people fighting skills and encourage them to defend themselves and protect others. In martial arts, there is a metaphoric comparison of the tiger and the dragon. Both are valued for the strength they have in self-defense, but the tiger is primal and relies mostly on instinct and is reactionary. It is likely to attack beyond what is needed for a defense in a situation, and it, it will fight battles it doesn't even need to fight, at least in our metaphor. So when we are using the strength of tiger to defend ourselves, we must be careful not to overdo it. We must be careful not to lash out because reactionary tiger can hurt the very thing it is trying to defend. A perfect example of this is when fighting with a romantic partner over intimacy issues. Feeling intimacy threatened, tiger can react defensively and lash out and attack the very person, and here I'm meaning with words, but an energy, attack the very person who the intimacy is with, shredding their connection with the attack, which did not fit the goal of defending the intimacy they shared. This instinctive reflex to fight does not serve us in every situation. Sometimes it does, but not in every situation, and we must discern. And aside from defending against a physical attack in the moment it is happening, it often makes things worse, especially when women and men are relating with each other. The dragon is able to use its strength with spiritual insight. It only fights battles it needs to and uses its strength wisely in ways that best help a conflict rather than make it worse. My teacher always put it this way. The tiger reacts, the dragon discerns. I'm not saying never fight. I'm saying not to fight the war of men and women because fighting this war makes us into reactionary tigers, lashing out and making the conflict worse. The transcendent way calls for us to discern like dragons as we navigate our conflicts as men and women. Okay, now, on with these examples of the transcendent way. This first example is one of my favorites. I shared this example at the end of part one last week. But I had to rush through it then, as I only had 20 seconds left to tell it. So I'm not even sure how much of it came through. I'm going to retell it. There are important, yeah, there are important nuances to this story. And after this break coming up in just a sec here, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the full story and give you the, the full retelling with the important nuances. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon. Stay tuned. I'll be back in a moment. 
I'm coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkali, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I am your host, Akalon, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, on with the first example. A woman, when I was a, back when I was a ballroom dance instructor, a woman came into the studio. This woman, had, she came in by herself for a dance lesson. She had visible scars that are hard to hide when you're wearing a dress for ballroom dancing. Her wrists had uh, permanent, it looked like bruises, but they were permanent imprints of somebody's hands and fingers you could see. Because they, someone had grabbed hold of her wrist so hard, they left a permanent visible reminder of whatever traumatic experience that was. Now, she seemed awkwardly self-conscious about her wrist being visible, which is understandable to me. Her demeanor was timid. She also seemed sweet and gentle. I saw the hand imprints on her wrists from across the room as she entered the dance studio. When I saw them, my masculine instinct to protect women flared up and I felt angry. Then my masculine nature brought up the instinct to provide safety for women. And my anger subsided as I prepared myself to calmly match her gentle energy. I sensed she was recovering from abuse and yet here she was, Incredibly, showing up for a dance lesson that would involve being touched by a man she didn't know, me, and her body being maneuvered around by this man she didn't know for about an hour. I felt respect for her for this. It seemed courageous. And the trust I felt her show up with felt sacred to me. I didn't know really if it was a man or a woman who had marked her forearms with their handprints. But either way, I was going to contribute to her her healing by how I interacted with her. I felt into the healthiest relating I could give this woman in the circumstance of a dance lesson and contributed that to her dance lesson experience. I looked in the, I looked in the eyes of, I looked her in the eyes and non-verbally made it obvious that I did in fact notice the marks on her wrists. And as I did so, I also communicated with my energy and my body language that I accepted her regardless of those marks and what had been done to her. Not shrinking my energy back horrified nor injecting any awkwardness on my part, but rather communicating energetically 
with her that, in a matter-of-fact way, my willingness to connect with her, regardless of the visible scars she was self-conscious of. I spoke to her with a friendly tone of someone who genuinely cared about her beyond professional obligation, genuine warmth. Having established a good rapport, I danced with her. With one of my hands on the small of her back, my other hand holding hers, and with our bodies framed close together, I showed up for that woman as she was showing up for herself on a level deeper than a dance lesson. I gave her an experience of intimate safety with a man, and I gave her loving platonic energy. In that experience, full of nonverbal communication that conveyed mutual respect and trust from both of us to each other, we were outside of the war of men and women together in that experience. We were in peace. That experience was short-lived and may not have affected her much, I don't know. But the point is, it was a safe and supportive interaction of a man with a woman who was vulnerable. And whether it affected her greatly or just a little, it contributed to a culture of men and women harmonizing, which is the transcendent way. Here is another example from this transcendent way. And one thing I enjoy about this example is that the person in this story was able to defend her personal boundary, physically and sexually, physical and sexual boundary, without fighting the battle of the sexes to do so. This woman, a friend of mine, impressed me with how simply, calmly, and effectively she used her personal power in this situation. She epitomized dragon discerning how to apply its strength. After this experience, I went to my next Kung Fu lesson with my teacher, and I, I had to brag brag about it. I was so proud of her. Um, so anyway, we're on the dance floor. We were we were dancing at a club at the Mall of America. Now, a man none of us knew came up behind her and started grinding on her. She wasn't on the dance floor to do that, so she moved over a few feet away from this man and resumed dancing. He followed her over to where she had moved to, went up behind her and started grinding on her again. I was ready to step in on her behalf, as was her husband, but only if she needed backup, which we didn't think she did. So he and I kept on dancing while keeping a watchful eye on the situation. I saw my friend with incredible poise calmly turn around, firmly place her palm on this man's forehead and slowly straighten her arm which moved the man back and clearly established her personal space to this guy. He looked surprised and confronted her with his own nonverbal communication. There was a bit of a standoff for a moment. She calmly held her ground. Her energy was neither aggressive nor timid. She did not emanate fear or anger, just simple confidence and assertiveness, enough to take care of herself in that situation. She held her ground energetically with a smile and an expression that both conveyed her personal power and called him out on him being inappropriate and that she didn't like what he was doing. Actually, her expression to me looked like, what the hell do you think you're doing? But she didn't look actually bothered. She was so in her power. A moment later, the man left the dance floor and took his inappropriate gender relating with him. That was quite a victory for my friend. She was carrying plenty of hurt from the war of men and women in her past, yet had managed in that situation to not be triggered. She didn't go into a weakened or fearful state. She was used to having panic attacks, but did not have one in that situation. Again, I was so impressed with her. But nor did she lash out from the wounds she was carrying. What she did do was interact with that man that was interacting in a way with her that she did not like. She interacted with him in accordance with the standard of healthy relating that I keep calling us back to for how to relate to each other. What's the healthy relating in this situation? She didn't go along with the invasive behavior, yet she didn't interact with him from the place of fighting the war of men and women either. She established what was healthy in that situation, which was her declaring her boundary and him leaving her personal space. I have more to this story when we come back in a moment after this break. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon.
Coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I am your host, Akalon, coming to you live on the BBM Glo- Global Network and Tune In Radio. So before the break, I shared this experience. I witnessed my friend uh, handle the situation on the dance floor, and I was expressing how I was proud of how she handled it, the transcendent way, not of the war of men and women. Now, it's a, part of why that impresses me, how she handled it, was she, well, when she was, she had a lot she could be reacting from. When she was a girl, she had been molested by her, uh, an elderly man who lived next to her family. And while her mom knew this was happening, uh, going on, and she had a lot of pain from that, uh, still at the time when she's in this situation on the dance floor, and somehow she didn't get triggered and she was in her power, and she handled it enough to where she didn't, it was just enough to handle the situation to where she didn't get so upset that she couldn't have fun dancing. She, she didn't get re-triggered or re-traumatized. She handled the situation with just enough assertiveness. And she was able to, that, that whole thing lasted maybe a few minutes tops. But then she was able to continue on with the rest of her night, which is a huge victory. Because something that happened in her past did not ruin for her an enjoyment she was having in the present. Now, thinking back about this, this reminded me of an experience she and I had about a year earlier. This is another example of of male-female interacting in the transcendent way. She had shown up to my apartment panicked and crying. I welcomed her in and comforted her. She was too upset at first to tell me what she was upset about, so she rested her head on my lap and I stroked her hair to soothe her. She and I were relating with each other in the natural way of feminine and masculine, unhindered by the war of men and women, in the way we were relating with each other. After a few minutes, her crying subsided and she told me what had happened. She had gone to sell plasma, and part of the intake process for that was a physical exam. The doctor giving the physical exam, looked like the elderly man who had molested her when she was a girl. My friend was triggered by this and ran out of the exam room, having a panic attack. She was glad my apartment then was close to that plasma center by the University of Minnesota, so she didn't have far to go to get comfort. And she was in a panic attack, so she didn't really want to drive. She came to me for protective male energy and shelter. I provided this until her sense of safety was restored. 
It took only about 10 minutes. Even though it was her pain from being abused by a man that had brought her to my door that day, in our relating with each other in that experience, we were not caught up in vengeance or hatred of men or in fighting the male-female conflict. We were in a separate piece from that conflict, and this allowed her to heal a little and contributed, con, sorry, and contributed to healing male and female relating in a cultural sense. It may have been a small contribution, but all those contributions matter. I want to acknowledge here, sadly, that this friend of mine battled with her hurts from the war of men and women her whole life. Sometimes she fared better in this than other times. Sometimes she did well, like that time on the dance floor. But other times she struggled. And after many years of... After many... This is not fresh, but it still feels fresh to me, so sorry. Having trouble getting this out. After many years of struggling with this, she killed herself. For some of us, transcending the war of women and men is a matter of life and death. The transcendent way helps with this, though. Not only does it bring us out of the war of men and women, it increases cultural health and safety, which helps us relax into healing. As well, it fosters a deeper connection between men and women that helps the healing. This equates to replacing a source of pain, the war of men and women, the conflict of male and female, with a source of relief and restoration, this better relating, this alternative. Okay, now how are you doing with this so far? I know what I am calling for here goes against our cultural norm and perhaps against what our wounds are leading us to do. There is appropriate outrage rippling through our culture. And I'm calling for transmuting that outrage into harmonizing. This can be hard to do, and I know the resistance that can come up for us in this. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm saying that it's worth it. And I recommend getting all the support and encouragement you can with this. Find people who are choosing not to fight the war of men and women, People living the transcendent alternative. Draw inspiration from them. And when you look at our culture, look for men and women being healthy together, supporting each other, collaborating with each other, helping each other heal, and making our lives together more enjoyable. Everywhere you can find them, look for, the, look for and find examples of the transcendent way. And when you find them, every time, feast on them. Every time you find them and be one of these people creating these examples so other people can draw hope and inspiration from you. Create and collect transcendent way experiences in your own life to heal and reinforce you and to inspire others with. And you can listen to this episode and the part one of, from last week for reinforcement and inspiration about this anytime you want. And if you want more than that, well, you can hire me for coaching about this. You can email me to request that uh, at Acolon, A-C-C-O-L-O-N, at innervictorypower.com. And it would be wonderful if, if you emailed me with stories from your own experience of these transcendent ways. Uh, again, that's, if you want to share an example, I, I'll read that to, on air sometime to help inspire the other listeners. Again, that's Acolon, A-C-C-O-L-O-N, at innervictorypower.com. Of course, if you want to call in with an example, that's even better. Okay, giving you more examples here. Uh, these examples coming up here are in contrast to the part of the war of men and women that involves men forcing themselves on women sexually, and in particular around consent. Now, when I was a boy, first learning about and hearing about, uh, well, rape, uh, in abuse culture, the news was reporting a huge increase in the amount of men raping women. And after a while, the grown-ups reporting this news amended that. They said that it, it wasn't that there were more rapes happening, it was more being reported. And as a boy, I got excited by that. I was encouraged that more was getting reported because I thought my hope was, oh, then it will end soon. 
because we have more awareness that it's happening and our awareness of that will make it stop. Now we're currently, well, it hasn't, and 30 some years later, we're in a resurgence of reporting. That's wonderful. I'll tell you more when we get back. There's a break coming up. Uh, stay tuned. We'll get more into this in a moment. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm Akalon, your host, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Sheikh Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ugmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Now, I was talking about from when I was a boy that when there was an increase in reporting of, of rapes, that I was encouraged, I was hopeful that our increased awareness would end it, where it wouldn't happen anymore. We know it happens, and so now it doesn't happen anymore. And 30 years later, it's still happening. Uh, now we're in a resurgence of reporting, and that's still good, increasing the awareness. And now we need to be, it's important what we do with our awareness of, yes, it happens, and how pervasive the problem is, um, and how, how widespread the sickness in the culture is. Uh, and as you know, as a Kung Fu priest and a spiritual Kung Fu warrior, my life is dedicated to bringing light to the darkness and overcoming the sickness. So I'm very uh, into that uh, happening, but it, it's how we go about it. It really matters. We have our awareness. And then how we go about it can make it better or worse. So awareness is the first step. I've been telling my, my students for, for years, awareness is the first step to freedom or liberation. But now going on, going with that, do we take are we t are we tigers, reactionary tigers, using that information, escalating the conflict, uh, or are we discerning with as as dragons, and wisely using our power, making things better with this trans uh, transcendent alternative? Now to the examples I was referring to, so we need all the positive examples we can get. And now the issue of consent has been a big one lately. It's always been a big one with me. When I was a teenager, I believed that when a girl says no, she well, doesn't want to have sex, you stop trying. Um, and I took that further uh, beyond just do you have sex or not. To me, consent mattered all the way through. So if a, if a woman decided for whatever reason something came up during sex that she wanted to stop, you still stop. It doesn't matter that you've already started. Uh, you know, and I as, I as a teenager, I was telling my guy friends this as we were making our choices. Um, now, I got tested with this the first time, my first time having sex. 
we in the throes, my girlfriend got triggered by uh, a, a memory came up of past abuse when she was younger and she needed to stop. So guess what we did? Uh, and then I gave her time and space to work through her being triggered. Okay, that's one example. Another example. One night when I lived above a bar, my roommate invited the sexy bartender up after a bar close up to our apartment. The three of us hung out for a while. And after a while, I went to bed in my bedroom and they went to bed in his bedroom. About 10 minutes later, just as I had started to fall asleep, just as I was falling asleep, I woke up to her crawling into my bed wearing only a shirt. Now, I'm a passionate man, and I was attracted to this woman, but I knew she was drunk, and I could tell that she had crawled into my bed to sleep. That was it. So I felt into what's the healthiest thing to do in this situation. Well, let her sleep. So, And I, myself, I went back to sleep. I let that situation be something I never hear of in our culture, or rarely. I usually hear the opposite. But I let it be a situation where a half-naked, drunk woman could safely pass out in a guy's bed and not be taken advantage of. These are the situations that we need to have making our paradigm in our culture. Now, in similar fashion, there was the time I let a woman stay the night with me for amorous activity, but she had flashbacks from drug use when she was younger. So I spent the night alternating from sleeping to comforting her. Each time she would have a flashback, wake up screaming, upset. I would sit up with her, I would hold her, and I would soothe her back to sleep. Nothing to... Nothing more in that situation was going to be healthy. So I, I kept it caring for rather than taking from or taking advantage of. And men listening, take some cues from this. Maybe this is how you are with women, and I hope it is. But these are the interactions that help us heal our culture. Another example, and this one's a bit different from the others. When I was 19, I had a girlfriend who, well, something seemed off about her affections toward me. She kept trying to have sex with me, which was great, except that something didn't seem right about it. I didn't know why, but it felt like if I had sex with her, I would be contributing to something unhealthy or taking advantage of something sad that I didn't know about. So I kept putting her off. I kept dating her, but I kept saying no to sex. Now, I had met her at a friend's house. Who had, my friend had several roommates, and I often hung out with all of them. She knew them because one of them was friends with her previous boyfriend. Now, one day, a month into dating her, we were hanging out with those friends at their house. When I went into the kitchen for a snack, my girlfriend followed me into the kitchen. She backed me up against the wall and put one leg around me seductively. She told me that she was frustrated we weren't having sex, so much so that before I had come over that day, she had gathered my friends around the living room and was asking them, how can she get me to have sex with her? And when she told me that, I still had the same sense. Something's off here. Don't. And I, but I didn't want to tell her, I feel like having sex with you would be unhealthy in some way. Can't tell that to a woman that doesn't seem. So I just told her, well, you have, to, you have to wait a while for me. And she said, I know. Otherwise, we would have had sex every night since we met. This was another of many warning flags that I'd been noticing. Soon after that, I found out why my intuition had been telling me not to have sex with her, at least not yet. I learned that when she was 12, she came home from school and found her mom dead on the living room floor. Her mom had committed suicide. Okay, I'm told this is a horrible time for a break. I'm sorry. Stay tuned. We're having a break. Uh, when we come back, I'll finish the story. And uh, this is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm Akalon, your host, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. 
BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and advisory committee for people with disabilities and she is a consultant for the pennsylvania governor's conference for women her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the access paratransit system of allegheny county evelyn stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled to protect their freedoms and enable them to live normal public lifestyles to learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, right before the break, I was telling you that I had found out why my intuition was saying, don't have sex with this girlfriend, something's not right. You'd be contributing to something that doesn't help increase health, but but more of the sickness so or something with dysfunction. And I learned that, okay, she when she was 12, she'd come home to her mom, had committed suicide. Now, ever since then, she had learned to survive by finding a guy, having sex with him right away and continuing to in order to be cared for and have a place to live. So she would trade sex for being taken care of and having a place to live. She did this with guy after guy. Only the previous guys didn't really take care of her. They used and abused her. That was what I had been picking up on to not participate in in any way. I had this. I kept getting the sense, care for her without having sex with her. That's really important. So that's what I was doing. Then I learned out why, and I was glad I had listened to my intuition or that spiritual sense. Um. And of course, I would not have used her or abused her, but I would have participated in that survival pattern of trading sex for being cared for and having a place to live. And I'd, it's not that does not increase health in our culture or help uh, male-female interaction be healthy. Um, and actually, I never I never did have sex with her. I, I didn't reinforce that pattern. So she went ended up going back to her previous boyfriend who did. But at least I did not. Now, another example I'll give you um, of a man relating sexually with a woman in a way transcendent, sorry, transcendentally, (laughs) that's meditation. I have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Bear with me. I'll get, I'll get through this here. Okay. Contrary to the abuses that plague our society, another one to encourage the paradigm of women and men being healthy with each other. Um. Oh, <laughs> good. I already get I was coming full circle back to one example I already gave. That's with the, the girlfriend when I was a teenager and she needed to stop having sex during sex because she was triggered and I allowed for that. Okay. All right. We have time for the rest of this. So much in the, a big topic and so little time. Now. Focusing on the transcendent way. That's last week was setting up the premise, and here's more the problem with fighting the war of men and women. And today is more focused on the transcendent way. I'm going to give you some examples here of some some ideas, some choices that you can make that ease the conflict of of men and women and makes it easier for us not to get caught up in the fight of it. Now, some of this are for all of us. Some of these uh, are men to women or, or women to men. I'm going to start with. Uh, men to women. 
Now, men, when you ask a woman out and she rejects you, continue being wonderful to her. Continue being wonderful to her when she says no. And this way, you better represent our gender and you better value women. And when women experience us being wonderful to them, regardless of whether they date us or not, they feel safer and, in, and feel safer in connecting with us in general. And the culture is healthier for it. And also let's all skip male bashing and female bashing. Devaluing men and devaluing women destroys the healthy connection and peacemaking that we need. And women, don't make the man you are currently with pay for any of the previous ways men mistreated you if they did. And same on, on the reverse side with men. Don't make the woman you are currently with pay for any of the ways previous women mistreated you. And let's all be gracious with each other. Men, be gracious with women as they heal their inner wounds. Women, be gracious with men as they heal their inner wounds. And all of us choose enjoyable interactions with the opposite sex over connection avoidance with the fear of getting hurt. And men, celebrate women in general. Sing their praises. Women, celebrate men in general. Sing their praises. And all of us, value the opposite sex. This is actually the number one priority action for the transcendent way. When men value women and value femininity, this brings out the best the feminine has to offer the masculine and brings women and men closer together culturally and spiritually. And when women value men and value masculinity, this brings out the best the masculine has to offer the feminine and brings men and women closer culturally and spiritually. Valuing each other, each gender, creates healing and connection between men and women. And that is what we need. And we can, of course, extend this peace that gets created uh, by valuing to extend this valuing to any subgroup in humanity. I'm keeping the focus on in this episode on men and women because the topic tonight is the conflict of men and women. I'm going to interject something here about masculinity. There is a natural drive in men's masculinity that makes us protect protective of women. When men are abusive of women, they are disconnected from their masculinity. Women valuing the masculine's protective nature helps men connect with this aspect of ourselves, which brings men into alignment with harmonizing with the feminine and being peaceful with women. So wonderful interplay that happens with that. Part of the mutual valuing. To value each other, we as men and women need to understand our differences and how they complement each other. The war of men and women has us do the opposite. You've probably seen this in, in, in your own experience, men complaining about the ways women are different and making them wrong, and women complaining about the ways that men are different and making them wrong. So men are making women wrong, women making men wrong for their differences. The transcendent way, the alternative way to the war of men and women, we value our differences, we understand them, we, we look into them to understand the differences better than value them and find out how we can use our differences to collaborate. There is a naturalness to that. It's, it's part of the harmonizing. So valuing how our differences are and, and even if we don't directly relate to them, how do we harmonize with them? Okay. Oh, and a, a lot of our differences, by the way, are biological instincts for survival that we as a species have been developed, a gender and a species have been developing for centuries. So it helps to learn them so that we're not on automatic pilot from them. And that creates a lot of the conflict without understanding what's really happening. Now, there's a woman uh, who delved into this and she's been studying it for over 15 years, Alison Armstrong. And she's effectively helping women harmonize by understanding these biological differences and what they're about. And I hope to actually have her as a, a guest on the show sometime. I'm going to try for that. Now, here's a practice that helps us value each other's gender traits. I bring this back to discernment. When you see something negative or harmful of, of people of one gender are doing to another, carefully discern whether that harmful mentality or behavior is actually due to masculinity if it's men or due to femininity if it's women, or whether it's something else being misperceived as masculinity or femininity. Like what you ask? Well, it could be narcissism, selfishness, self-loathing, loneliness, 
uh, immature ego, a disconnection from one's own heart, empathic overload, emotional, mental, or spiritual trauma, chemical imbalances, social programming, mental illness, spiritual sickness, and let's not forget the war of men and women itself, that the negative impact or hurtful behavior could be coming from that gender war. More of this after the break. This is Spiritual Kung Fu. I'm your host, Akalon, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Baby boomers face many challenges, and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top. Sharon Ball, nurse practitioner and Christian life and wellness coach, can help. Sharon has written a book called Reinventing Yourself Today, and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life. Whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals, a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds, or a full kick-butt life reinvention, Sharon can work with you. Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. Welcome back to Spiritual Kung Fu. I am your host, Akalon, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You may have noticed that I haven't said much about the war of men and women being fought in dating relationships and marriages, which of course it is. I've kept our focus on the overall scope of this conflict, meaning men and women as a whole. This conflict needs to be looked at in this large scope so that we can address its effects and influences on us beyond dating considerations, which could easily be overlooked if I primarily honed in on dating and and marriage right away. This is a bigger problem than just in the, the... that one way of relating as male and female. That's why I focused on the overall. Now, of course, it's important to address uh, with men and women in dating relationships, romantic relationships, marriage. Um, there's there's a lot happening there. And we could spend an entire episode or more on that subject. And in fact, if, and I probably will, and it, especially if, if a bunch of you let me know you want that episode, I definitely will, for sure. You can let me know if you want that episode uh, on that topic. You can put a, a message in the comments on the page that you're listening to right now. You're linked up to my page on BBM Global Network in order to listen to this. If you click read more at the bottom, uh, the replays appear, and underneath that is comment section. Or you can email me and just let me know with a simple message of men and women relationship conflict, something simple like that. Um, again, emailing me would be Acolon, A-C-C-O-L-O-N at innervictorypower.com. What I'll say about it now, however, th- a little bit, is that the war of men and women is most, most intensely fought in romantic relationships. And the usual casualties are intimacy, healing, connection, enjoyment, and children. And here I mean children's relationship skills and understanding about relationships and and how to relate to the other gender. Now, there are more reasons than the male and female conflict that uh, causes relationships to fail, but this conflict definitely does some damage. When a man and a woman pair up, typically each of them is already carrying the war of men and women inside them, and they play that out in their relationship. If kids are involved, the kids watch, learn, and absorb this conflict. Some moms and dads even attack each other through their children. I knew that one as a kid. I was caught in the middle. I don't do that with my kid. But if if the relationship ends, commonly the man and woman carry on the battle of the sexes and escalate it through the breakup, especially if there is a divorce and a custody battle. And by the way, I'm going to do a show about getting through divorce uh, in, in a healthy way where everyone's intact, ideally, uh, how to get through divorce using spiritual Kung Fu. Um, anyway, uh, the fighting often continues after the split up through toxic co-parenting. And this, in this way, children are brought into the war of women and men, taught to fight it, and eventually pass it on to the next generation in some way. We sure don't need to follow that cultural model, however. 
Now, I'll wrap this up by saying it takes spiritual strength to forego the war of men and women. It takes spiritual strength to practice this transcendent alternative, especially if you have deep wounds and deep pain. You must assert your commitment to healthy interactions with the other gender over your fear of them and anger at them. You must assert your commitment to harmonizing with the other gender over the urge to attack or disparage the other gender. Your commitment needs to be to health, ultimately. Health for all of us and peace with the genders. So we contribute to that in every way we possibly can. Your commitment needs to be greater than your hurts, greater than your pain. And the greater your hurt and pain, the harder it is, the more spiritual strength you need for that. As I said, this takes spiritual strength. And if you master yourself, you will have the needed spiritual strength for this. And self-mastery is another big part of this show. And hey, you're in luck. I'm teaching about self-mastery next week. That's the theme. I'm going to really get into gear with self-mastery and an overview and then get into more specifics from there. So listen to this show next Thursday and you will be well on your way to mastering yourself. And I am a self-mastery trainer, so if you ever want training in this beyond what you're hearing in the show, you can explore that with me. I, you can hire me for this. Now, thank you so much for listening to this topic. Uh, we did two episodes on it. I packed as much as I could into them. And next week, we will be getting into self-mastery. Um, there's a lot of excitement stuff for next week. So please listen in on that. Thank you for listening. This has been Spiritual Kung Fu. And I've been, I'm Akalon, your host. I've been coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You've been listening to Spiritual Kung Fu with Akalon Hollingsworth. Listen each week for a deep health, soul strengthening, and transcendent transformation. And learn the skills for defending your well being and becoming a master right here on Spiritual Kung Fu. been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.